Okay, we will then take a look of the concept of stationarities. So the concept of stationary is very important. The definition of stationary is that the joint distribution of the y s plus 1, s plus 2 up to y s plus t also include y1, y2, y3, all the y does not depend on the value of s. That means the distribution of y, the mean, the variance and the covariance between various y is a constant. It is not a function of time. Then as a result, we call this is stationary. So the stationary means that the variance between different y is the same or the variance of y is not a function of time. Okay, with the time change, the distribution of the mean variance and covariance, so apart from the variance, also the expected value, also the covariance between the y and yt. So y s and yt, while t, s is not equal to t, all are not a function of t, that we call it stationary. And next we'll investigate some uh, po po possibility that it break the stationary assumptions. The first one is called the trend. So in econometrics we have two trends. One is called a deterministic trend. The other one the other one is called stochastic trend. Deterministic trend means that this is non random. So this is a non-random function of time. Say, the value is increasing with a co with some constant in time, and we will call this deterministic trend. For the stochastic trend, so in contrast, this is random and varies over time. So most of the variables, the economics studies are stochastic trends. So the inflation rates, unemployment rates, they may be in some sense random. So you cannot predict the next year's inflation rate easily. Okay. So one of the one of the famous model is called the random walk model. So the is the random walk model stationary or not? So we are going to investigate. So the random walk model is that the yt is equal to the y at the past period plus some error terms. So in finance, there are many applications based on this random walk trend. So today's stock price or the equity price is only a function of yesterday price. So yesterday's information is the best guess or best prediction of pre of today's stock price. So in this random walk model, we assume that the EUT be given all the past value is zero. And as a result, the expected value of YT given all the past value is just equal to YT plus one. So this is the basic setup of the random walk model. Today's stock price, the expected value of today's stock price just based on yesterday's stock price. Okay, so whether this is stationary, so for stationary, it means that the variance of yt equal to the variance of yt minus 1 or, or the error term, the mean variance covariance is not a function of t. Okay, so let's take a look. Well, actually, the random walk model is non stationary. Okay. Why? So we can prove it in two ways. First one. So based on our, based on the model, we know that the variance of yt is the variance of yt minus one plus variance of ut. And you know this is some sort of constant. So unless this is equal to zero, otherwise the variance of yt will not equal to the variance of yt minus 1. <coughs> okay. So another 
proof is that I assume y0 is 0 then y1 would be y0 plus u1 that is u1 y2 will be y1 plus u2 that is u1 plus u2 so y3 is y2 plus u3 that is u1 plus u2 plus u3 so you have a trend okay yt would be equal to u1 plus u2 plus dot 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 up to plus u t okay as a result the variance of yt is t times the variance of u and you can see this is a function of time so again violate the stationary assumptions the variance of yt is cannot be a function of t if it's stationary so this proves that random walk model is non-stationary well actually the random walk model is one special case of the ar1 model for ar1 model it means that yt is a function of the y at previous previous value so a random walk model just simply assume that beta 1 equal to 1 well actually if the beta 1 is more than 1 the absolute value of beta is more than 1 we will call this stationary okay then you know in the AR1 model if beta 1 is equal to 1 or greater than 1 then it is non-stationary okay given this is stationary the joint distribution of y is not a function of t well I'm going to prove it so uh, what I'm doing is that to show that the mean variance and covariance are not are all are not a function of time okay so yt equal to beta 1 yt minus 1 plus ut <coughs> so this is also, also equal to beta 1 times beta 1 yt minus 2 plus ut minus 1 plus ut so I just replaced the yt minus, minus 1 to be beta 1 yt minus 2 plus ut minus 1 well I will get beta 1 square yt minus 2 plus beta 1 ut minus 1 plus ut next I will replace the yt minus 2 to be beta 1 yt minus 3 plus ut minus 2 <coughs> and the other I keep the same then I get beta 1 cube yt minus 3 plus beta 1 square ut minus 2 plus beta 1 ut minus 1 plus ut well I will do the same thing so at the end I will get yt equal to ut plus beta 1 ut minus 1 plus beta 1 square ut minus 2 plus up to beta uh, actually up to infinity so this is equal to beta 1 which about i while i is the sum of sum from 0 to infinity u is t minus i well we can set lead to these relations then let's check all the joint distributions first the EYT this is just so you take out the constant and expected value of u t minus 1 T minus i and this is equal to zero so this is the first assumptions in the econometrics so we can see this is not a function of t okay next is the variance of it so this is equal to again you take out the constant and square it and 
sometimes the variance of the remaining term. So you will get, okay, variance of ut minus 1 is equal to variance of u times sum of all beta 1 i squared. Okay, so this is equal to 1 minus beta 1 squared. So the sum, this is the uh, geometric series formula. So finally, the covariance between yt and yt plus 1 this is equal to covariance of yt and beta 1 yt plus ut plus 1 okay and you can simplify it by beta 1 variance of yt plus covariance of yt and ut plus 1 and this is 0 so what you get is beta 1 times variance of u divided by 1 minus beta 1 squared well again you can see for both variance and covariance this is not a function of time you cannot see time here so we complete the proof and for beta 1 smaller than smaller than 1 we can also ensure that we can find a band Okay, it will not be explosive in some of geometric series. Okay. So after we take a look of the AR1 model, we will take a look of the ARP model. So the ARP model is in this form. How can you see whether they are stationary or not? So in ARP model, again, you need to check all the data is less than 1. So you can form this, you can put the y to the left hand side and form a polynomial like this. Oh no, you will find them roots of the polynomial must be greater than 1 in absolute term then in this case this is stationary well how about if the root is equal to 1 if the root is equal to 1 just similar to the AR1 model if the beta is equal to 1 then we will call this unit root or what we call this stochastic trend so stochastic trend simply equal to unit root okay so what is the consequence of unit root or stochastic trend so you will have basically three consequences. So the first one is that the auto correlate auto regressive co coefficient, the beta one hat, are biased to a zero. So this is not equal to the true population beta. Second, the, the t distribution is also not not normal. As a result, you cannot do any f test, t test because all the all this based on the assumption that they are normal. Third, you will lead to a called spurious regression. So spurious just means fake. So if you have some stochastic trend, so if you rely on those data, you may have some fake regressions. Say, so some economists previously found that the U.S. inflation is some constant. and associated with the Japan's GDP okay that means higher the Japanese GDP higher the US inflation and after several years and they found that the opposite way Okay, so these are the spurious regressions. So these two are fake. If you just look at the OLS, you may think that, oh, higher Japan Japan's GDP, higher US inflation. Here, lower Japan's GDP, highest US inflation. 
but these are not these are not true so you have no theory or any reason to to say why the japanese gdp and u.s inflation are related so this happened because of some stochastic trend the inflation rate and the gdp are not not necessarily stationary and if you do the regression like this you may find fake conclusions so lastly we will take a look how to test whether the whether there is a unit root or whether there is a stochastic trend and basically we will do a test called Dickey Fuller test named after two economists Dickey and Fuller okay so Dickey Fuller test basically they test the AR1 model with these assumptions so they test whether beta 1 is equal to 1 while the alternative one is beta 1 is less than 1 or some some people rewrite so you can rewrite the the Dickey Fuller test by okay setting the change in yt is equal to beta 0 plus delta yt minus 1 plus ut then you are testing beta uh, delta 0 equal to 0 versus the alternative hypothesis is delta is smaller than 0 okay so you calculate the t statistics of the of the coefficient of y t minus 1 and compare with some critical value okay then you can see the first leg whether the first leg is Whether whether first leg suffer from the stationary problem. So in ALP model, we can also do the similar things. So in ALP model, you are testing whether the so you so the structure is something like this: beta zero plus delta y t minus one plus gamma one change of y t minus one plus gamma two change of y t minus two plus gamma 3 change of yt minus 3 plus up to gamma p change of yt minus p plus ut okay so again the null hypothesis is the delta 0 equal to 0 whereas the alternative one is delta less than 0 well okay uh, the the usefulness of the key fuller test is to see the first leg, whether the first leg are stationary. And you cannot use the key fuller test to test whether the second leg or third leg are stationary. Okay. So again you conduct the T statistic calculating the the coefficient of Y T minus one, then you compare with the critical value to see whether they suffer from the stationary problem. So the critical value is not not equal to the to the normal t statistics okay so basically the critical value is slightly greater than the one side test if if the t statistic is more negative that means smaller than this critical value then we can reject the null hypothesis okay so we have some examples So we have examples. So if the change of inflation is equal to some constant minus 0 0.11 the inflation at t minus 1 minus the change in inflation at t minus 1 minus 2 points 2 6 change in inflation of 2 minus 2. So this is the standard error. okay then you can calculate the t step so this is equal to, you are finding the t step of the coefficient that at previous value so this is equal to negative 0 0.11 derived by 0 0.04 and you will get this is negative 2.69 okay so negative 2.69 is not more negative at 5% level 
so you cannot reject the null hypothesis. That means here, inflation is stationary, uh, is non-stationary. Okay, it's unit root or inflation rate follows the stochastic trend.